Well, good morning and welcome to Life Church Online Service. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Wow, praise God. Have you ever actually thought about what you're saying or what God's Word is saying when it says, this is the day the Lord has made? Well, think of it this way. Sometimes when I'm going to eat dinner and I'll find something in there and it'll be so good and I'll say to my wife, this is so good, you put garlic in this, oh! And she'll say, I was thinking about you while I was preparing it and I know you like garlic and so, and you know what? Today, when God was making this day, when he was preparing this day, he was thinking about you. Praise God, because he loves you so much. He's prepared this day just for you. So whether you're here in Nandi or some other place in Fiji or overseas, praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Why don't you close your eyes with me and let's just open up this service in prayer. Father God, we just worship you. We thank you, God, that you had us in mind while you were preparing the events of this day, that while you were sending your angels out, making preparations for how this day would go, that you were thinking about us, how much you loved us, and how you are uh, preparing a way before us, that your intentions are good for us, hallelujah, to prosper us, to give us a plan and a future. We just worship this morning. Receive our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 
Well, praise the Lord, Life Church. What a wonderful privilege and honor that it is to be found again this Sunday, worshiping with you. And did you know, and I'm sure you know, this is actually the last Sunday in May. And I want to encourage you already that if you are here, I want you to know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life, even before we even start our message today. So this month has been the month of Pentecost, and uh, I'm sure that you have heard all the sermons uh, that have been going on this month. And what, what an honor it is to have the Holy Spirit with us today. Amen. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't heard any of the sermons, go back and listen to it because it just tells us and it educates us about how much the Holy Spirit can actually help us um, in our walk with God. And, you know, even with Pastor Moses' sermon last Sunday, battle the battle for our minds, he told a very, very interesting story about the woman with the issue of blood. And, you know, that woman, when she touched Jesus, that very same power that left Jesus, that's the same power that we are talking about today when we talk about Pentecost. So, yes, so I encourage you to go back, have a read, have a, have a, have a watch if you have not caught um, any of the sermons this month. What a joy and a privilege it was to learn about Pentecost. So, um, so this, um, today, I want to take us to the book of Hosea. Um, you know, I have been meditating on this book for a couple of months now because I asked the Lord, you know, uh, what can I, what can I give to our, to our people? What can, what message do you want me to give to our people? And he took me to this book. And you know, for me personally, this book is like, whenever I go to the start of it, I'm like, okay, you can wait there. But when God took me to this, this time, you know, one of the reasons I used to move away from this book was because the first few verses was like, God had said, go marry a prostitute, right? Right. So I'm like, okay, it can wait for a while. But when God took me to this book this time around, and I have actually been meditating on it for the last two months, I've been studying it, and I've just been looking at how God looks after his people, I saw myself in this message. I saw myself as the wandering Goma, you know, when, when Hosea asked Goma to marry her, she continued to be unfaithful. And, and that was me, you know, that was me. Like, I continued to wander from God. I continued to look here and look there and just look everywhere else except for him. But here's the thing. What he was doing was he continued to pursue me and he continued to pursue me and he just continued to forgive me, you know, and continue to have mercy on me and continue to be faithful to me. So for me, the book of Hosea has just been such a revelation for me in the, in the last couple of months. And, and I hope and pray that I can bring this to you today as we look um, at, at the book of Hosea. So I'm not going to go through all the, the, um, the memory verses or the, uh, the verses for that matter. I'm not going to look at everything, but I'm going to be pulling out some of the verses from the book of Hosea to help us to understand what the message was and also the message that I want to bring with you uh, to you from God uh, this morning. So before we start, let me just take you through a background, right? Let me take you through a background uh, of this book. A quick one, Hosea prophesied in Israel during a season of material wealth, but spiritual poverty. So Israel was seeing a lot of material wealth at this time. God was blessing them, but they continued to rub shoulders with the heathen nations and started taking on their practices and worshiping their gods. God then called Hosea to marry a prostitute by the name of Goma, and this, was sent, and, and this was to send a message to the people of Israel, thus giving them a visual demonstration of their unfaithfulness to God. Goma herself had betrayed Hosea, and he had to go back and bring her back as she went to prostitute herself. And we can see that in chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Hosea literally watched his wife go back and prostitute herself. 
The Bible records Goma having three children with Hosea. Now listen to this church. The charge against Israel is recorded in chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. And what God was saying was the charge against Israel was there was no faithfulness, there was no love, no pity, no mercy, and no acknowledgement of God in the land at the time. Instead of responding to gratitude or ingratitude to God's grace extended to them in material blessings, the Israelites used their crops in making offerings to idols. The spirit of harlotry had led them astray. We see this in chapter 4 verse 12. And Israel played the harlots, drawing themselves from subjection to their God. So this is what was happening in the time of Hosea. So God called Hosea to marry this prostitute in a time where they were having so much material wealth, but spiritual poverty. Amen. So that just gives us a little bit of a background. Now the theme messages that are coming from Hosea, the ultimate theme message of Hosea was God's love for backsliding Israel. It is very evident in the way that God kept the lookout for the nation. He used Hosea to fulfill this message of pursuing Israel, of constant forgiveness and restoration came um, in chapter 14. Amen. So in the midst of all of this that was happening, the spirit of harlotry, which is also known as the spirit of prostitution, was continuing to lead the Israelites astray. So the spirit of harlotry was a combination of cursing, lying, murdering, stealing, and adultery. Again, this is recorded in chapter 4, verse 2, when God was talking about the charge against Israel. Now there is another very well-known verse that we find in, in Hosea that a lot of you would know. And this is in chapter 4, verse 6. And, and, and the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I will also ignore your children. Church, we need to take note of this. We will be destroyed when the word of God is taken out of our lives. We sometimes look at this verse and, you know, we say to ourselves, oh yeah, we just lack knowledge, right? We lack knowledge. But knowledge of what? What was God trying to say to the Israelites during the time of Hosea? What knowledge was taken out from this priestly nation who was supposed to have led the way, but they got led astray themselves? Amen? What knowledge was it? The Bible is very clear. The Bible says you ignored the law of your God. Amen. So, so we need to keep this in mind as we're going through the message today. Now let's talk about the spirit of harlotry. We look back at it again because you know what? This is very dangerous. This spirit of harlotry leads, as the Bible says, it leads us astray. And we need to be very, very careful about it especially when the word of God is taken away and how it can affect you and I today. And it's important that we get this. You see in verse, verse 11, okay, verse 11 of chapter 4, the Bible says, harlotry and wine and new wine take away the heart and the mind and the spiritual understanding. This prostitution and this excessive drinking, which the Bible refers to wine and new wine. So there was drunkenness that was rife in the land. And this just stated the influence that it was having on not getting into the law of, of God and the reason that it was being ignored. The influence that drunkenness and debauchery church that can have on you. And this debauchery is excessive indulgence in sex and alcohol. It can, what, what it can have, the influence that it can have on the mind is known to actually deaden the affection of your heart and, and, and also dull 
the faculties of your mind. That's the influence it can have on the mind and the heart both at the same time. And this is what the spirit does. It literally takes you astray. And we see that after verse 11, we see that in verse 12 of chapter 4, my people ask counsel from their wood idols. And their wood gives them oracles and instructs them. Right? For the spirit of harlotry has led them astray. So this spirit very dangerously can lead us astray. The Bible is very clear when, um, when it talks about the spirit of harlotry. So today, church, as we take on the theme of God's love for us in Hosea, you know, his constant pursuing of you and I, his constant forgiveness in our lives and total re restoration if we want it and, and I know we need it, I want to bring to us this question. What would you have said to God if you were Hosea? Would you have taken on the calling? Would you have stepped out in faith to trust God for that calling in the kind of atmosphere and environment that Hosea was operating in? Would you have prepared yourself for it? Well, I believe Hosea did. There was no flinching on his part. You know how I know? When I look at the first few verses of Hosea, God called Hosea to marry a prostitute. The very next verse, verse 3, Hosea went and married a prostitute. He didn't say, but why God? But how God? But who God? You sure it's me, God? He just went and married the prostitute. And I want to remind us this morning in John 15, 6, Jesus said these words. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Amen. So God chose Hosea for this calling, for this purpose at that time in the nation of Israel, because he knew that Hosea was ready, not only to do the calling, but to trust God in the calling. In other words, again, in other words, church, my question is, what is your purpose? I talk about purpose all the time. I just feel that it is too crucial. Aside from talking about purpose all the time, that is my calling to bring people into their purpose. So I will always talk about it and I will never apologize for it until the day I go to be with my God. So today it's so crucial because if you don't know your purpose, you will be flying about in the wind when somebody says something about you, you will call, curl up in one corner thinking, why did that person say that about me? I'm just trying to walk in my purpose, right? You will not be sure. You will not know what's happening because you're thinking, oh, okay, uh, may maybe that's not my purpose. But I want to tell you, you know, you, you, when you know your purpose, you are going to be different. Okay? You might even do something crazy like what Hosea had to do. Right? That was Hosea's calling. He was called for that. Right? You will be different. You may not have the money you used to have, but you will be walking in spiritual health. And let me tell you as well that God also wants to bless you materially. It's not that he doesn't want to. He wants to. He has proven that time and time again through the Bible. Amen? So what is is your purpose. What we need to, you know, what do we need to do to find out our purpose? Well, number one, I just want to share two things with us today. Number one, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are many ways that you can find out your purpose, but today I just want to cut out everything, right? Just cut out all the stuff that comes along with it. And I just want to tell us Christians today, our trump card is the Holy Spirit. That's where we go. And I want to take us back to the Pentecost verse of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Amen. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Church, 
It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that the Greek word for power is dunamis? This word is used 10 times in the Acts of the Apostles and always refers to God's power, miracles, and his signs and wonders. So when the Bible uses the word dunamis, it never refers to our strength or ability, but always to the power of the Holy Spirit's ability. Amen, right? How exciting is that thought? I just think it's absolutely wonderful to know that we have a partner that we can partner with every single day of our lives as we are carrying out our purpose. So as Christians, we have this power of the Holy Spirit. It is available to us. So when we have this knowledge, where do we go? Where do we go? We go into prayer. That's where we go. You go to your secret place of prayer and you ask God for this dunamis power. You seek him. You go into your Pentecost room, into your upper room, wherever you need to wait. You wait. You wait just like the disciples waited on the day of Pentecost for the power to fall. You wait for your purpose to fall into your life. I encourage you today to do this. You see, this is what Hosea did. He waited, he, he connected, he stayed connected to God, just like what the disciples did. They stayed connected in one accord. Hosea did the same, he stayed connected to God. So when God told him in chapter three, verse one to three, he said, go back and get your wife. The next verse, he went back and got his wife. He stayed connected to the source because the source was telling him, go, go, do this, say this. And he did what he needed to do. Paul also used this dunamis, word dunamis in 2 Timothy 1.7. And I'm sure you know this verse. You know, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind or disciplined mind. All right, self-control. So what was Paul trying to tell young Timothy? to know. He was trying to tell Timothy, he wanted Timothy to know that the Lord had given him a dynamic ability to stand strong in the faith at such a young age. Young people, are you listening to me? Timothy was a young man, just like some of you are in Kingdom Seekers today or in the youth ministry. He was a very young man and he was being sent out for ministry. And God is telling you, the same spirit, young person, young man, young woman, the same spirit can go with you. The power, the dynamis, dynamite power of the Holy Spirit can take you into your purpose and continue to push you and so that you can live your purpose. I just love Randini Vika's story of how she found out her purpose when she was just a 19 year old young girl and she knew that God had told her that she was going to be a missionary. You cannot tell me that at a tender age of 19 she still was not fearful and she was wondering, Lord, but where's the money going to come from? Where's my resources going to come from? Where am I going to live? Where am I going to go? Don't you think those questions came to her? Of course. I'm sure if you sit with her and ask her her story, she will tell you how she had to go with this spirit, this dunama spirit. Every time she left to do her missionary work, she had to come alongside this dynamite power that was going to take her to where she is today. And today, she even has her husband serving alongside her as a missionary. So he's come alongside her as a missionary as well. What a wonderful story of purpose. Amen. When you know your purpose, you will just keep going. Nothing will stop you from what you need to do here on this earth. And God wants the same for you and I. He wants us to tap into this supernatural, this supernatural dynamite power of the sweet Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's look at another verse. I want this verse to comfort us at this time as, as Christians living at this time, trying to figure out what we're going to do. And this verse is in 2 Corinthians uh, 12, 9. And it also talks about this same dunamis power. 
okay and it says but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me it's the same power church that's that God is calling you and me to it's the same power that Paul had to depend on as he was going on his journeys it's the same power that you and I have to tap into and rest in when we are carrying out our purpose. And let me also share with you another way of seeing the evidence of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, happening in your lives uh, as you're trying to live out your purpose. We see this in that very famous um, fruit of the Spirit verse in Galatians 5, 22, verse 23. Uh, we see that having the presence of the Holy Spirit will accomplish the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So while you may be waiting for the infilling of the Holy Spirit in the evidence of speaking in tongues, because that is a gift that I highly recommend and the Bible tells us to desire, I want to encourage you today that there is another evidence that the Holy Spirit lives in you. And that is by ensuring that you are producing his fruit. Amen. And what are those, those fruit? It is love, joy, patience, kindness, peace, right? And uh, gentleness. And, and I said it already, kindness, goodness, and self-control or self-discipline. This is the fruit of the spirit that has to be evident in our lives as we're carrying out our purpose here on this earth. And this is what we should be striving for. Uh, every single day. Now, I mentioned you have the power to carry out your purpose. I mentioned one. Number two is the power of the Word of God. Amen? The power of the Word of God. In Hosea 4, 6, as I mentioned before and showed you the verse, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It was because the Word of God was being taken out of that whole scenario in Israel. And today we are experiencing the same thing. Maybe you might not be doing it in the form of the actual spirit of harlotry, as in the day of Hosea, but we have other distractions. We have social media, we have pornography, and all of this is online, but the same spirit is operating here. Let's not kid ourselves, church. Let's not kid ourselves. Satan is the father of all lies. What is he doing today? He's repackaging. He's repackaging. But you open up the package and it's the same spirit that is operating. So the word of God needs to be the knowledge that is being put into us every day. If you are putting in the knowledge of social media, pornography, and other stuff that you're trying to get into your life. And let me tell you, that's having an adulterous affair with your phones and your gadgets. And where else is the adultery happening when you're watching it online? It's happening in your minds. That's where the adultery is happening. People can't see that because you think, I'm hiding it, but you can't hide from God. You're going to, it's gonna cloud you. It's gonna lead you astray. That's what the spirit of harlotry will do. Let's not kid ourselves. Amen? Let's not kid ourselves. The more you're going to do that, the more you will not find out what your purpose is. And even if you found out your purpose, it will delay you further and further from living your purpose. So, as I've shared that with us today, church, I've shared two ways. And I am sure that you've heard this so many times. I am sure that you have heard, walk with the Spirit, read the Word of God, read the Word of God. But I just hope that in this message of Hosea, how important it is to stay connected with the Spirit, stay connected with God, and how important it is to stay connected with the Word of God, because it will lead you astray. This is just such a great book to show how we can be so led astray and we wander here and wander there. And I really hope 
that this has taught us today. So my question again to you, what is your purpose? Are you going to find out? Are you going to find out? And let me just give you a tip. God will get you to a certain level, or actually you will come to a certain level, and God will take you from there by His Spirit and through the Word of God. And today, I just want to speak to the corporate man and corporate woman out there today. God has spoken to you about your purpose, and you have not been directed accordingly. You have not been obedient. He has spoken to you to start something up, and you haven't started something up. And you've been saying, oh Lord, but I don't know anything about business. And I don't know how I'm going to get influence here and influence there. And I want to tell you today, if God has spoken to you, don't wait. Don't wait, corporate man and corporate woman, because you're going to lose out on the purpose, on that package that you have been designed to come to this earth to deliver. And I'm now talking to the man or the woman or the girl or the boy that's sitting at home right now and God has told you to start something up, to make something, to do something, and you still have not done it. You still have not done it. God will take you to a certain level. Sorry, you will take yourself to a certain level and God will take you from there by His Spirit. Be encouraged today. You know who you are. You know who I'm talking to, whoever's listening to this right now. Young man, young woman in the youth, I'm talking to you now. If you don't know your purpose today, there is no excuse. Get into the waiting room today. Get into the waiting room and wait with God until the Spirit falls on you to tell you what your purpose is and get into the Word of God because that's the only way. This world will not show you what your purpose is. Only He will show you what your purpose is. I challenge you, young man, young woman, to do that today as you have hearkened unto the Word of God. And so today, um, you know, as we end, uh, as we end our service today, uh, I would just like to call us to a declaration. You know that I love declarations because for me, declarations is a commitment. It's not a commitment to me, it's a commitment to God. And I'm not here to give you a sermon so that you can feel good about it or you can feel whatever about it. I'm here so that you can commit to our Heavenly Father who's waiting for you, who's pursuing you right now because He wants you, He chose you to do something and you still haven't done it. Amen. I just want to declare with you today and I want to also say that if you mean it, please join me in this declaration. Uh, it's only about seven lines and I will say the declaration and you will say it after me. If you are unsure for some reason or the other, that's okay. Think about it. Take a screenshot of it. And in 24 hours, I recommend that you make a commitment today to our Heavenly Father because He is pursuing you right now as we speak. So we will now go and... Um, and, and, and do our declara declaration together and you will follow me as we start. Heavenly Father, I declare that you have a purpose and plan for me. That I did not choose you, but you chose me. To not be distracted and choose your word, the Bible, over all other distractions and not ignore it. To prepare myself with the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit as I wait upon you for my purpose to be revealed. That in partnership with the Holy Spirit working in me, I will produce the fruit of love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That I will wait as long as it takes until my purpose is revealed to me. 
that once I know my purpose, I will continue to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So I would like to pray with us this morning for especially um, our service this morning and uh, everyone who has made this commitment. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for the book of, of Hosea, oh God. We thank you that we, we see you in this book, oh Father, constantly pursuing us, constantly forgiving us, oh God, constantly restorating, rest, rest, restoring us unto you, oh Father, and we thank you for being such a wonderful reminder, oh God, bringing such a wonderful reminder to us this morning that you care about us, that you love us with a steadfast love, with love and mercy continuing to just flow through our lives every day. We thank you. We thank you that Hosea was able to provide such a wonderful example of what it was to be purposed for such a time as that, O oh God. Lord, I also thank you for this area of purpose, O oh God, and how wonderful, O oh God, that you have placed the gift in every single one of us here on this earth, O oh God, and that you are expecting us to deliver that, O oh God, here on this earth before we come to see you, Lord. I thank you for each and every person that has prayed this declaration today. Lord, that you will guide them, that you will be with them, that the fruit of the Spirit will resonate in their lives, O oh God, in such a way, O oh Father, that their purpose will just be revealed, O oh God, and come out so that they can continue to live it according to the power and, and dynamite power of the Holy Spirit. I also thank you for those who are yet to commit, oh God, that they're gonna go back and they're gonna think about it, oh Lord. And I pray, oh God, that you will speak to them as well in a very special way and letting them know that no matter what, they do have a purpose to fulfill on this earth. So I thank you for this time. We just always and every time, oh God, every time we give you back the glory, the honor and the praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say, Amen.
praise the Lord, it's offering time. And in the church we were in, when we were in Africa, whenever the pastor said, it's offering time, the church would respond, it's blessing time. And then he would say, and blessing time, and then they'd respond, is offering time. Kind of like here, where we say, God is good. And everybody says, all the time, and all the time, God is good. So why don't you say it with me? Hey, it's offering time. Blessing time. That's right, and blessing time is? Offering time. Praise the Lord, Saskia Kaisa. Thank you, Jesus. So anyways, we are in uh, the, the time of offering, and I just wanted to thank everybody for their giving. This uh, church, I'm, I'm glad to be taking the offering for Life Church right now, because Life Church is a body, a family that reaches out to people. And uh, even uh, this week, while uh, Kim was in the store doing some shopping, she came across Rondini Law, Pastor Jerry Nambea's wife, and she was in the store buying groceries, got into a conversation, and uh, Rondini said that uh, someone had uh, given the church money, and so she was purchasing food to go and bring it out to some families that needed some food. And so, praise the Lord, your, your gifts and your giving, uh, God is using. Uh, and so today, as we prepare to take up our offering, I just want to encourage you uh, to uh, one, thank the Lord for providing for you, and two, uh, to think about the other people who are having needs. And so, uh, why don't we? Why don't we just right now pray? Let me pray over you and what you're going to give, and uh, God's grace in your life. And as uh, we're doing that, you can just uh, consider and pray about what the Lord would have you to give this week. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we just worship you. We thank you, God, for health, Lord. I, I thank you, Jesus, that, uh, uh, that uh, I am able to work, Lord. I thank you also that I'm not having to spend all my money on doctor's bills. Father, and I'm praying for all of my brothers and sisters out there today, God, that you would continue to provide opportunities for them to gainfully be employed, as well as creative ideas for them to produce wealth in their own lives and for other people as well. I pray your grace and blessing over their health and finances so that that money that is coming in does not have to be channeled out to those other things, but can be channeled into the kingdom to be a blessing for other people, God. We just worship you, God. Thank you so much. In the name of Jesus, amen. I just once again thank you, uh, everybody here in Fiji, as well as our overseas donors, for what you're doing to continue to be a blessing to the Lord and to your family in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 57 through 58 say, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So how do you stay victorious? How do you stay steadfast, immovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord? You stay connected. You stay connected to the Lord, and you stay connected to other believers in the church. So with that being said, here are your opportunities for this week to stay connected. Monday night is family night. And we love family night. We love to encourage you to spend quality time with your family. But for some of you, maybe you're thinking, we do this every week, and I don't even know what to do to make family night interesting anymore. So I'm going to do you a favor and give you a great suggestion this week. How about making Monday night a family movie night to watch one of the uplifting faith films that have recently been released? For instance, on YouTube right now, there is a new series out about the life and ministry of Jesus. It is the best depiction of the loving character of Jesus that I have ever seen. It is called The Chosen. They have released all of season one and part of season two. Trust me, you need to watch this series. Your whole family will be blessed by it. 
Tuesday, as usual, is TWAPS Day, and they are continuing their ongoing uh, Zoom Bible study on Battlefield of the Mind from 7 until 8 p.m. This week's facilitator is Salipa Mbosse. We invite all the ladies to tune in for an awesome time of hearing God's Word and powerful discussion time. Sometimes God speaks to us through His Word. Sometimes it's through dreams or visions, and sometimes it's through music, but sometimes He speaks through other people. And maybe through the testimony of one of these ladies, you will hear exactly what you need to hear at this moment in your life. So don't miss out on your opportunity. Wednesday is prayer and fasting day. It's an opportunity for us to teach our flesh who's actually in control of these bodies. Romans 8:13 says, "For when you live controlled by the flesh, you are about to die. But if the life of the spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, we then taste his abundant life." I don't know about you, but I want to taste that abundant life. So I'm going to join together with the church in corporate prayer and fasting, and I challenge you to do the same. Fiji could really use some Christians who are willing to set aside time for prayer and fasting. So would you join us this Wednesday? Has anybody seen an awesome group of kids blowing up Facebook with some art uh, made out of leaves and art made out of food and garden parties going on everywhere. It's amazing. Oh, do you know who they are? That's the word keepers, the doers of the word class. And they are blowing up Zoom every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. with some awesome things. Parents, please encourage your kids to be a part of that every Wednesday and Sunday, 10 a.m. They don't want to miss it. Pull up. From the word keepers this morning, we'd like to say a big Vinaka Vaka level to all our partners. Firstly, we'd like to thank our Zoom facilitators, the Kim Gardner and the Garaus. Also, we'd like to thank Pastor Mark Gardner for providing those wonderful training opportunities. Secondly, we'd like to thank the Sanimo family from Australia for sending in the children's snacks. Thank you for your thoughtfulness. The Raturala family from San Francisco for the provision of those communion elements and the Hendersites for facilitating the freight and clearance. Also, this morning we'd like to thank the media team, an awesome media team for always being there every week for us. Last but not the least, we'd like to thank our incredible parents for your prayers and support. It is our prayer that every seed that you have sown into our ministry, that you will be rewarded exponentially. We love you and God bless. Also on Wednesday night, the King's Men come on to the Zoom platform with their virtual meet at 645. Men, take that opportunity just to uh, connect with other men, to learn about being priests in your household, to learn how to be godly men. It's an awesome time of sharing together. Friday night is T4J time. Youth, make sure you're looking sharp and join us on Zoom at 7 p.m. You never know what's going to happen on that platform. Dolphinatis, this coming Friday, we will be focusing on a major question for this week. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Well, the leaders have come up with a fun project for us and Liz will elaborate. So get your creative and party hats on teams because this coming Friday, we will be having a party, a vision board party. The Bible has 21 verses that emphasize on the importance of having a vision. So create your vision boards using Vanguard sheets, newspapers, magazine cutouts, or if you do not have access to these resources, you can create it online using something like Canva. And you'll present these on Friday at 7 p.m. on our Zoom sessions. Join us as we learn to create some important goals to help us reach our full potential that God wants for us. See you there. Covenant Keepers, you also are meeting Friday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Even though you can't get together in person, don't miss that opportunity to see the smiling faces of the other young married couples. You don't want to miss it. Saturday is Sunrise Prayer. 
at 4.30 a.m. Even though it's put on hold right now, being able to meet together, we are still encouraging you to pray from home. Psalms 141 verse 2 says, Let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Man, may your prayers just join with all of the other prayers of the saints and just be lifted up as, as incense, a sweet aroma to the Lord as he hears you cry out, especially for the nation of Fiji right now, as we're going through a a terrible tragedy with the COVID outbreak. So please continue to be faithful in your homes, even though we don't meet together in person. The kingdom seekers decided to shake things up a little bit and meet in the morning instead of the evening. So they will be meeting on the 5th of June, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. via Zoom. They have a guest speaker this week, Pastor Sammy the Cow. So I am sure he will have something amazing to hear, kingdom seekers. Don't miss your opportunity. Tithes and offerings is such an important part of our worship. We thank you so much for your generous heart of giving towards the kingdom of God, even during this lockdown time. For those of you who need it, the Life Church bank details are on the screen. Also, if anyone would like their envelopes to be collected, please contact one of the people listed on the screen. We continue as a church to advise our church members to follow what the government is saying. Uh, Stay home unless it's absolutely essential. Sanitize, wash your hands daily. Uh, Only go out if you need to, and don't forget to wear your mask. We believe in following the instructions that our government leaders put out for us. They have our best interest at heart. For more information about our weekly programs or church membership, please feel free to send us an email. Also, check out our social media channels to stay connected with all the weekly updates. Have a wonderful, blessed, safe COVID-free week in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, we've come to the end of our service. And so before we all go into the rest of our day, let's right now just close our eyes. Why don't you lift your hands up, praise the Lord, and just uh, receive a blessing. Thank you, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just worship you, God. We thank you for the word today, God, that it's our daily bread. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the one who reveals. You are the one that makes things come alive. And uh, Jesus, you're the one that helps us, Lord, to obey and to fulfill that word, God, that we can run and uh, with that message and not be weary, walk and not faint. You are the one Uh, Lord, hallelujah, that when we receive that word, that you cause it to come to pass. You're the one that gives the increase, Lord. So we just worship you, God. Our hands extend out, Lord, and our hearts are filled with thanksgiving and praise to you, Lord, for bringing about the fulfillment of of your word this week, Lord God. We just worship you. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, uh, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that your spirit would go out, God, that you would uh, fall upon your children, that you would send those, that you are sending those angels out right now, God, to fulfill your word, God. May it come to pass, Lord. May it be so, God. Thank you, God. Strengthen your people, God. Fill your people, Lord God. Let us go out with joy and break forth with singing, God. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord give you peace and health and grace. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Shit. 